finishing off our disordered eating book. This is part four, the final part. Um, we're talking just a little bit more in depth on mindfulness, which is not a new idea. Cultivating conscious awareness of the present moment along with the thoughts and actions within it is a practice that has been taught and followed all over the world in many cultures and traditions versus a spiritual concept and more recently as a research proven method for gaining greater peace and wellness. In a nutshell, mindfulness simply means acknowledging that life unfolds one moment at a time and in each moment we have a choice of what to think, feel, and do. Many people have little conscious awareness of how their thoughts affect their moods and choices, eating disordered or not. A branch of psychology called cognitive behavioral therapy says that if people can learn to become aware of their thoughts, they can change them. And if they change them, they will feel better emotionally and thus behave in more satisfying ways. Another habitual thought loop that can develop in people with disordered eating is constant comparison and judgment of themselves and others. This can take the form of walking into a room and instantly sizing up everyone in order to feel good if they judge themselves as the smallest person there or feel bad if they believe someone else is smaller. Either way, the judgment is used to fuel the compulsion to starve, binge, purge, overexercise, and the like. It is, never, it is a never-ending cycle of dissatisfaction that ends in exhaustion, isolation, and despair. You want to make sure that you are noticing destructive thinking as it's happening. You want to stop. You want to breathe. Deep breathing calms your nerves. Like it completely resets your nervous system. So making sure we're doing those diaphragmatic breathing is a really good way to kind of reset your mind and reset your nervous system and acknowledge that you are engaging in negative thinking patterns. Others are on their paths. You want to be in this moment. Research has proven that learning to quiet the mind and body helps relieve depression, anxiety, stress, and perfectionist tendencies, all of which accompany disordered eating. If you can learn to quiet your mind, you can also become more attuned to your true emotions and needs so that you can make healthy choices to fulfill your actual needs, not your habitual ones. Rapid or shallow breathing is interpreted by the brain as danger or stress. It puts you in fight or flight, and that's going to raise your body's anxiety levels. Deep, relaxed breathing that inflates the belly. So again, belly breathing, diaphragmatic breathing, tells your brain that everything is fine and it's okay to relax. Increasing monetary, monetary mindfulness is very possible. It just takes practice. Some simple ways to get started include turning off technology. For a certain amount of time each day in order to focus more on real life experiences, taking a sensory walk outdoors uh, for a minute or so, you can notice sights and name them as you see them, like a tree, a flower, a sidewalk, and then switch to sounds and name those, like your cat, dog, car, an airplane, some leaves, some wind. Um, and then you can go through the other senses of smell, touch, and taste. This also happens if you um, are prone to anxiety and panic. Um, naming a few things from the five senses can help kind of bring your brain back to where you are now and not to the intrusive thoughts that you may have. So it kind of works in a lot of ways, but you might surprise yourself at the things you discover that have been there. As you are doing a simple test, such as washing dishes or showering, try to notice the smells, sights, and textures as you experience them and just really be in the moment. Name them, let yourself fully feel soap or bubbles or water. Quietly sit in a chair or lie down and become aware of your breathing. Don't change it, just feel it through the nostrils, down into the lungs, and notice the exhale as the process reverses and just become aware. And just try kind of counting up to 10 and back. You lose track, start over, and do it without judgment. Any last minute questions on this book or about mindfulness in general, please feel free to comment below.